fellow armchair generals, mainly those people watching the VOD later. Yes, I'm adjusting my chair here. Um, so I don't think there's anybody here yet. How are you all doing today? I'm thinking about adding a Friday afternoon, my time here in California, I guess 9 p.m. in Europe. Live stream as an ongoing thing, thinking about it. Not focused on any one, well, focused more, shall we say, on strategy games. Not on, um, you know, War Thunder or something. Focused, it doesn't mean exclusive, but not focused on a particular game. So, um, love to hear your feedback, especially, um, I mean, if anybody shows up now for this, this is part of the test. Um, this is on schedule. No one really, well, Harry knew that this was coming, but no one else really knew that this was going to be a thing, maybe. Um, and so, but even those of you watching later on YouTube, you can post um, in the comments whether you think um, the date and the time is good. There's no point in doing live streams if nobody's going to show up. Where, which, now of course you can watch it later. And I love YouTube because, of course, I make the videos when I want, and then you watch them when you want. Okay. So that's it. Now, we're taking a look here at a new game. I'm not even sure if this is out yet, or maybe it's out. I don't know. Um... It was given a copy by um, someone representing um, Decisive Action Games here. Um, we can see Maneuver Warfare Panzer Grenadier Battle Group. And I played a little bit through the tutorial. And I'm going to play it again here because I'm trying to learn this. Um, and I also want your feedback whether you want to see more of this or not. This could end up being a very good game, or it could just be, eh, I don't know, um, at this point. The graphics are not, at this current time, are not spectacular, as you will see. Um, so, love your thoughts on the game as well. Okay, so we're going to go to Border Clash Tutorial 1939. Okay, so, um, Commander, the war with Poland has started. Your battle group must seize the intersection code name links. That would be that there. In order to set the conditions for an advance east by the division, it is your chance to test capabilities of your troops in combat for the first time. Do not let the men in the division down. Okay. Mm, or still you must see yes so that we basically already read that okay you're repeating yourself a normal normal yes start you have several different types or unit types available for this mission hover your mouse over it to over a unit to learn you can also access detailed information about your units in the encyclopedia Get close to close this window, but continue to do this. Okay. Um, and continue on to that. Okay. Close. So, okay, here we are. Okay. So, um, like I said, they, they, they have stunning graphics in this. Um, tank company. Italian commander. Uh, Panzer Grenadier Company, which is a little early. Well, Panzer Grenadier Company motorized. Yeah, a little early for Poland. Didn't quite exist. Yes, they had motorized units, but the term Panzer. My understanding of what a Panzer Grenadier platoon, company, battalion, um, is, is, uh, armored infantry. The, um, 
as the war goes on, Grenadier becomes the thing to call the um, infantry units um, instead of infantry. Uh, I think at one point Hitler orders basically all of the divisions that aren't um, in all of the infantry divisions to be reclassified as grenadier divisions, uh, except for his, um, well, I don't remember, um, special or whatever, I forget the term, um, uh, Jaeger divisions. Um, and this doesn't, of course, apply to mountain divisions, panzer divisions, Falsam Jaeger divisions. So it just sort of becomes a term later on. But panzer means armor. So it's sort of armored infantry. Well, to the best of my understanding, um, there was no um, armored infantry really in 39. Yes, they had the armored half track. Those were quite rare and few and far between. So, um, where there was more motorized infantry, but just a thing and a side to note. So, um, and then, uh, so support, uh, company heavy weapons. Okay. So some see it armed with mortars, making them capable of firing from behind friendly units while you select on the map, um, person or others are depicted. Right, okay. Um, the armor platoon, which I'm not sure if this means an anti tank. Okay, yes, I'm looking up here in the corner. 37mm anti tank gun. As opposed to, they did use um, anti tank rifles as well. Okay, and the 222 armored car. 105 millimeter battery and um, forward air controller. Forward observer team personnel times three. Okay. So we now have an idea of our units. Reorganization screen. Units in a holding zone. You know, I think I'm going to. Uh, yeah. Let's. Um, if we can close. Okay. Um, I'm going to quit this. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Now I wanted to restart. So I think I want to make an, um, an episode here. Just a moment before we. I just want to check something here. Yeah. I don't think we're live on YouTube at the moment. Maybe we are. Um, hmm. Anybody watching on YouTube? Hmm. Animal videos. Okay, no, yep, we're live. Cool. Just wondered if we were live on YouTube. I know we're live on Twitch because I'm watching that just to get the feedback there. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, we're going to start again. So I'm going to make an episode out of this, I think, is what we're going to do. Welcome, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 with a look at a new game called Maneuver Warfare. Um, focusing on, um, you can see, Panzer Grenadier Battle Group by a decisive action games. They kindly gave me a key. This is fairly new. Ah, you just tuned in, Stig. Very good. We're, we're just, we were sort of starting, I'm sort of starting the intro again. Um, we're going to take a look at this new game here. Um, and basically through me playing the tutorial, it's sort of a good way to um, kill two birds with one stone, live stream, just making this a live stream, but also um, make videos that will be up on the YouTube channel. And learn a game because they take a while to learn. Okay, so um, we're gonna start this here. 
Okay. Commander, the war in Poland has started. Your battle group must seize the intersection code name links right there. In order to set conditions for an advanced east by the division, this is your chance to test your capabilities of your troops in combat for the first time. Do not let your men or division down. And hello, Ari. Um, oh, I'm not even going to pronounce that. We'll get into maybe Grand C Tactician a little bit later of what why I'm not playing it. But um, you have several different unit types available for this mission. Hover your mouse over the unit to learn. You can also access detailed information about your unit's encyclopedia. Click close to close this window and continue once you're done. Okay, um, so we can see the stunning great graphics of this game. That doesn't, and yes, I'm being sarcastic. That doesn't mean this game is going to be bad. It just means it doesn't have stunning great graphics. And so good to have you here, Barry. Okay, so we have um, some unit types. Your battalion commander here. I'm hovering over this unit. Ober Lieutenant von Kleist. Was there an Ober, Oberst, um, Ober, no, it's Oberst Lieutenant Von Kleist. Because Von Kleist, the, the general I'm used to, um, but he wouldn't have been a lieutenant at this time. I don't know if there was also a um, like family member or just somebody, but no, yeah, probably have to put Von and Kleist, yeah. Okay, Panzer Grenadier Company, motorized 1939, which really, in 1939, there were really no, and I know I was just talking about this a minute ago, um, Panzer Grenadier um, units, and to my understanding, to be a proper Panzer Grenadier, it needs to be armored if and free. So, um, and as the war goes on, and I think like around 1944, sometime in it, Hitler renames all infantry divisions to Grenadier divisions, with the exclusion of um, the Jaeger divisions, so all infantry divisions. And of course, you know, Panzer divisions, Panzer Grenadier divisions, mountain divisions are not infantry divisions, so those don't don't get renamed. Hey Lum. Um, maneuver warfare. Now this is the tutorial. Harry, I'm still sort of learning this. I played through part of the tutorial before. I mean, Ares answered you. Maneuver warfare. That's what this is. The game is what's what's uh, the title's what's on the, you know, the, the the title on the tin is what's inside. This is maneuver warfare. Okay, both the name of the game and what you do in it. Um, so Panzer Grenadier Company, um, Major Rommel. Okay, <laughs> um, uh, heavy weapons um, can sometimes have mortars in them, but are, I um, guess, machine guns, anti-armor. So. Lutso commands 37 millimeter, three 37 millimeter anti tank guns. Lieutenant Wagoner, um, engineers type 45. Field well, 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 Ramke, he's the um, uh, one, one of my favorite. Um, uh, why am I having trouble with these words? I do. Um, Whenever I try to think of these things, um, uh, parachute, um, uh, what parachute division? What's the German for the parachute division? Why am I blocking on this? Um, and it's really more of a block once I try to go in it. Um, because I know I said it a moment ago, uh, without even thinking about it. Um, uh, Falsum Jaeger, Falsum Jaeger divisions, Falsum Jaeger commander. Yes, thanks, Ari. Yes, I know. I know it. I'm just having a block for some reason. So um, he's leading two, um, two, two, two uh, SDKF Z two, two, two armored cars, each with a twenty millimeter gun. Uh, okay, uh, Major Barr with a battery of four hundred five millimeter howitzers. Hauptmann Dietrich with forward observer team for um, fighter bomber reconnaissance, and we have Panzerkampfwagen. 2D company with 24 Panzerkampfwagens. Okay, so we have that. 
Okay, reorganization screen. Your units are in a holding zone divided into battalions, companies, and platoons, each of which, except the artillery and air force attachment, has a headquarters. A headquarters um, element coordinates their operation. Making them more effective in combat, you must ensure that each unit is attached to one. Units without or out of range of a headquarters will be penalized to reflect their lack of coordination. Only artillery will not be penalized. For this mission, you have one headquarters, so you should move all units into its battalion. Left click to select a unit, right click to place it in an empty slot in the battalion. Note that when you assign a unit to a new headquarters, the name of the latter to the right of the symbol changes. If a unit is too far to be in contact with the headquarters, the name will turn red. Note, the headquarters elements can't be reassigned and units can only be attached to hierarchies, i.e. company can only attach to battalions, platoons to companies. Okay, close. So now we need to um, move these guys into here. Keep them coordinated. I said we didn't need to do this, but we, I guess, will. Thinking is overrated. Yes, it can be. This is a game. Lump called Maneuver Warfare. This is a new real-time tactical game called Maneuver Warfare. World War II, yes. Panzers, infantry, companies with, yes. Um, this is would be somewhat common for just a basic, simple graphics war game kind of thing. Okay, continue. Um, so what we're looking at is the war games table, if you will. Now you are ready to deploy. First, you will need to click on the regrouping complete button to the right of the holding area. Then you can place your units in the deployment zone on the map. Left click, select, right click, place. Okay, order can be kept as close so it's fastest to your call your ears. Where you click close, close this window. Okay, so um, I guess regrouping complete. Now we can. Do we have our headquarters? Let's put that there. Um, we have, I think those are forest groups. <laughs> Let's put the tanks maybe over here. It's like swing around there. Um, no, not heavy weapons. Okay, reconnaissance. Maybe put here so they can come up there. Um, let's move the heavy weapons to that bit of forest. There, I don't know quite their range. Um, or the close support unit there. The infantry company will move here. We'll see about moving them up to this um, bit of forest there. Engineers? Well, um... Hmm. Maybe assault into the town if need to be. I don't know. Anti-tank. If they have tanks, maybe we'll move them sort of in here to cover that angle. Okay. Okay, so, um... We've... Oh, we need to place our artillery here. Um, well, let's put it as close as we can to the front at this for the deployment, so we may not need to um, move it any further with this size. And because Lum is not understanding things and other people might be like Lum, okay, what this represents is sort of a war games table but more so than that. Because obviously with computer graphics like this, um, you don't have a physical limitations like a table. But in real life, you have um, operational boundaries. 
the idea here is that these two sidewalls is that nobody else on your side um, is going to come inside of your boundaries. So anybody your units see in these boundaries are going to be enemies, so they get to shoot them. So if your unit here were to go out of its boundary, it may be driving through, say, a wooded um, road lane, you know, with trees on either side, and friendly units may, you know, getting a glimpse of them, see, oh, there's enemies there, let's shoot at them, because they can't be ours, because there's nobody else in our boundary section. So this is very common in military practice of giving, now this is maybe a bit narrow of a boundary area, but um, especially for a reconnaissance type function, but it's the idea that you've artificially limited your areas of maneuver so as not to get conflict um, with other units. So there we go. Okay, so we're going to begin. Okay, left click to select unit, right click to select its destination. Units move faster on roads and slowly through forests and water obstacles. Units in a forest or built up area will be in cover and suffer lighter losses from enemy fire because of roadside di ditches and trees and other vegetation that often line roads. The same applies for units on roads to a similar degree to indicate the unit is in cover. Its solid color changes to camouflage pattern. Units crossing water obstacles suffer heavier losses under fire. Note that there may be irregularities in the terrain that are not visible. On the map, use your scouts to find those as they can be used to approach the enemy without being exposed to fire. Don't expect forests to provide homogeneous amounts of cover. At times they will be dense, limiting visibility, but sometimes sparse enough to allow your units to see much further. Combat takes place automatically when units are in range. Red line will indicate um, enemy fire and blue line friendly fire, um, but only if the fire is effective. These units will not appear to fire, it will not appear if fire f fails to inflict casualties due to distance or thickness of target's armor. Only units capable of indirect fire can shoot over other units. Um, the exception is artillery area strike selected and artillery battery fire control F. Right click on a target. Shoot, select a forward air controller. Choose the type of air mission. Right click on target. Note. The remaining artillery ammunition and air missions indicate when you have when you hover your mouse over a unit. Artillery ammunition gets replenished, but air missions do not. Air units take um, air units or as units take casualty health bar on the left of their symbol decreases, as does their combat power. Being under fire affects unit morale, indicated by the morale bar on the right. And this affects your performance in combat. If morale drops too much, unit will withdraw. If it drops below, it will surrender, scatter. Morale will go back up when not under fire. Your mission will be complete. When you can take control of your objective and the timer at the bottom indicates how long you have to do that, the button below lets you compress time. Okay, so there's our time. So now let's get this something under. 6-1 six one six one Alpha. Alpha. You can move up to, say, here. India one, one. Okay, so we have the various ranges. Let's move. Now let's move. 6-1 Alpha, minefield, minefield, detected. minefield over. detected over. Okay, we have a minefield Echo here. One, one. So let's move our engineers. They may be able to. Tango 1-2. Um, India 1-4. Two. Two. Clear it, or if we even need to, I don't know. India 1 Let's keep our headquarters moving up. Seven one one. Six one Alpha. Echo one one. 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 Six one, 
Yes, yeah, so okay, they're clearing out the mines. That is terribly annoying. Okay, we're in the range of um, Okay, mines are clear. Okay, that is terribly annoying. Okay, they have a little bit of health. I guess they detected mine by getting a flat tire. Or whatever. One of the only two cars there. India 1 4. Six, one, okay, guys, you come up to here, maybe. Tango one, Tango two. one two. India one four. Since we haven't taken fire yet from that. Seven one one in position. Seven one one. Six one alpha in position. Tango one two in position. Tango one one. So we can see here, they're a bit camouflaged, so they're not well spotted if they. Tango one one. Okay, we're starting to maybe get out of good command range, so let's... Lima 1, in position, over. 7-1-1, in position, over. 6-1, Alpha. 7-1-1. Okay, we can see that they're still way out from... 7-1-1, now, over. India 1-4, in position, over. Go in settings and see if you can mute them. Tango Maybe one, after two. this tutorial. Wolf, now. tutorial here. Tango one, one. Seven, one, one. One. In position. Okay, we spotted an enemy anti-tank unit. Okay, so let's send one, one. these guys up to here. Seven, one, one. Six, one, Six, one, Alpha. Six, one, Alpha. Six, one, Alpha. Wolf, now. Wolf, now. Over. Over. Six one Six Alvin. Alvin. Okay, we're gonna need to bring these guys up here a little closer because they're just camped to Tango one. Seven one one in position uh, over. Six one Six Alvin. Alvin. Six one Seven Alvin. Seven one one. one. India one one. Six one Six Alvin. Alvin. India one four. Tango one seven one one in position over. Okay, we're moving a little too India one, India far forward to uh, our headquarters. Lima one one. Okay, so they're taking some fire. India one one. India one. One of these anti tank guns. India one one in position. Tango one one. Six one alpha in position. Over. What have I forgotten here? Any units way back here? We got artillery, so let's let's put India artillery one, position. Over. here. Uh oh, Tango these guys one, are running one, away over. from the anti-tank guns. And these guys gonna go five two. No, no, I wanted them to fire here. Um. Okay. Oh, okay. Stop. Um, that's one Alpha Wolf now. F less now, the mouse button. I probably should have had them lay some um, smoke. India one four. That would have been a good option. India one one. These guys need to assault, they're taking fire and Tango one, two. nothing is really, um, they're too far away to India one, four. do any good. Echo one, one. India one, one, one. Six, one, Six, one, Those guys are scared, they're taking fire, Tango they're running one, away. India one, one. They should be automatically shooting once they have a target. India one, four. Echo one, one. one, one. Okay, um, don't know why they're moving forward, because I thought I... Maybe just, I thought the range would be everything in the red circle here. Echo 1-1, one, one, in position. No, I really... Tango 1-2, one, one, wolf now, now. over. over. Echo one one. India one four. India one one. Tango one two. These guys, Major Conning, they've run away for some reason. Six one Six Alpha. Golf five two. 
Why? Okay. Six one. Six alpha. Wolf one now. now. India one one. Six one. Six alpha. One. Position over. Echo one one. Position mm. over. I got the perfect game for radio, seeing the game on the radio commander. Actually supposed to keep up with all that noise? I don't know. Seems India awfully confused. One. Well, they're shooting at this. Well, they're one being one. shot at. I've yet to see that I've successfully one. fired any it's artillery. Now Yeah, one, four, four. These guys don't seem to be shooting much. Go here. five two. Wolf, Wolf now, now over. over. Six one. Six, one their health completely sucks. Where did my armor go? My armor's running Tango, away. One, Just like German Panzers often did in World War Two. Um. Okay, well, I suck as a commander, that's clearly evident. I don't know why these guys are moving up. Okay, guys, um, can we now need a map? Okay. Um, let's quit. Let's come back to here, start a new mission. We don't need to read through all of the... Stuff, or maybe we do, but um, don't succeed. Right again. And what has everybody been saying in position? Reactive. Radio, yeah, radio commander. Now, radio commander is what you button for audio when you open the menu, please. Dear Squid, take a look at that. There's a special button at the audio. Um, uh, audio. Okay. Volume, speech volume. Master volume. So far, it's only, um, we'll, we'll reduce the speech volume down. Uh, we didn't really hear any of that. Okay. So that's that. Hey, John, Beth, how you doing? We're trying to learn a new game here. Okay. Um, resume. Okay. We've got that. Yeah, I, I figured out the deployment capabilities here. Oh, regroup. Oh, we well, we got it regrouping complete. Yes, we're regrouping is complete. Well, now let's let's move you to here. You're the. Hmm. Maybe we should have our um, anti-tank fired anti-tank guns. The artillery there this time. It's the airstrike. Okay, um, engineers, we know there's mines in the open. We're going to give this one more shot, Ari. Um, yeah, um, because I talk a lot about history and not just play the game, um, do 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 um i don't really want to um add a um civil war game in the middle of a civil war in america 
So that's sort of why I'm not going there, um, to put it short. Give your units orders to attack next time. Now, well, were they not attacking? Because they said the attack was automatic, I thought. Um, anything that it sees, the only thing we had to do was um, attack-wise was artillery and airstrikes. Okay. So let's... Okay. Um, except for artillery and airstrikes. For artillery, press Control-F. Okay, it's Control F. Right click on target to shoot. Okay, they were saying F and the other thing, but I didn't read this closely enough. That will probably help. Okay. Close. We're actually going to go slower here, so I have time to check things. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Control. Path seems complicated. Now here, let's see, ammunition, three salvos, okay, yes, let's see if you can clear them. Well, I guess we have the, the audio low enough that we're no longer getting the radio message. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, I don't know that we are having, so I'm looking here. Ammunition and trenching zero experience level. Artillery battery indirect fire. Now, I don't know how long it's supposed to take. Oh, you can just nice and quiet. Okay. I guess I just have my speakers turned down a little bit more. Oh, maybe it's because we've not yet spotted a unit, meaning it won't accept um, fire missions to map coordinations. Okay, let's try a... Um, This is the heavy weapons. Come on, keep going. Okay, you guys can move up now. Okay, so he needs to come up and spot, which is not unreasonable. Are they, their range. Oh, they're the air support. Okay, these guys. Okay, now let's try control F there. Or was I not selected? The okay, now they don't. Okay, well, control F here. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. I don't know if there's an actual stop button. Okay. Control F. Now it seems to want to move there. Oh. 
stop. I see what I'm doing. I'm hitting the wrong mouse button. I've been hitting right. That was what, um, once you select it to do something, control left, control, um, F, left mouse button. Okay, there we go. Shells on target in three, two, one. Boom. Okay. We're, they're getting hit with artillery. Now, now that we have that, let's try control G. Um, there. See if we get a smoke screen coming up. We'll just try G. Maybe we need to select the unit to. Okay, you, this time, come over here. You come up this way while they're being smoked, artilleried, or something. Um, guess that pauses it. I don't know if there's another gameplay controls. Yes, move camera left. Okay, stop stop unit movement. Okay, so I select the unit and hit space to stop the move unit. Okay. Well they're just saying F and left mouse button instead of that. Instead of needing to use control. So they are um Well, let's try this. Again okay, here. Or some smoke. They don't seem to be shooting effectively, these guys here. They're a little out of range, so move into range so they can. Don't worry, I have some other ideas to play some other games if this just doesn't work out. Trench ammunition 67%. Maybe they just don't have smoke, even though it says lay smoke. Okay. We're getting some artillery now on them. They're running away. These guys aren't doing any good because they're still too far back. I don't know 
of the engineers will be of much use. On air reconnaissance insert back there. I'm not sure if the rings mean different weapons effectiveness between, say, a MG34 and an MP38 type difference, or whether it's just close assault versus long range. I don't know if that matters. Well, I've not specifically seen blue lines to indicate our fire. They did say fire was automatic. But maybe it's not. I don't know. Close assault that. Okay, now we're getting some blue lines automatically there. There's our aerial reconnaissance. Square cube with a... Looks like a freezer... No, is that a freezer stork or something? I don't know. I don't know. It's H has something else, so it's not a freezer stork. It's a Heinkel of some sort. Okay, well... Looks like we almost got that anti-tank gun unit there. Our tanks here, um, they're down to 14 out of, what was it, 20? Of course, the, the training mission should be easy, but um, apparently I'm not good at this. Well, they're running away. Good for them. I don't know if we were to come back here again. Um, okay, they have 60 some percent. You're fighting Maginot line. Yeah, I don't know. It seems well. They're dug in. I'm I'm gathering. See here, they're entrenched 100%. These guys are entrenched 100%, and we're not. Well, they're entrenched at 42 right now. 19. Yeah, I would think it would be different. Hey, Arno. It is I, me. Yes. Good to have you here. For attack commands. Well, let's see. We can do that here. Um, gameplay controls, units, movement select. Okay, combat. When your unit, your, your units will gauge in combat. That's what I read earlier. Uh, I don't know if you were here, that lump. Your units will gauge in combat automatically when they come within range of the enemy. Their ability to inflict damage will depend on the range of their weapons, systems, their strength, their morale, and the enemy's level of entrenchment or the terrain the enemy is in. Range circles starting with the maximum range, then staggered. Every 100 points of combat strength become visible when the unit is selected. Units with a combat strength below 100 do not display range circles. Units that are moving will inflict less damage than stationary ones. Losses inflicted during combat decrease with the unit's strength and its morale. Once morale drops sufficiently, the unit will withdraw. Note that while losses, uh, while losses cannot be regained, morale will climb back up when a unit is not under fire. I guess we read that. A unit must remain in sight of the enemy to inflict damage. If a friendly unit moves between it and the enemy, the unit will not inflict damage in order to avoid friendly fire. Exceptions to the latter are support companies that are armed with mortars, although even then their firepower will be reduced. Mortars and direct fire artillery capable. Order of fire mission, select artillery unit, hold down F, and then click on the location on the map where you want to fire a mission. Selected artillery battery will open fire after a short delay and deliver barrage onto the target. 
If a unit is short of ammunition, the barrage may be cut short. No artillery unit must be stationary in order to fire minefields and engineers. Experience. Okay. Well, that's that, Lum. Back to resume. Okay. Hmm. They're getting artillery, so they're going to run away fairly soon. These guys are out of range. Now this is a company symbol here, and these are platoons. So I'm I'm moving a a um, platoon assaulting a company, if you will. I think that's right. Yeah, infantry company. That's right. It's just looking at this symbol. Where here we should be getting these guys here, the heavy weapons. I don't know why they're not firing at anything, meaning no blue lines. They're running away. Well, we don't quite want them. Let's see. That will stop that. Don't know if facing if affects anything. They could be out of ammunition. The enemy is maybe why they're not firing. Okay, they have ammunition. Still. I don't think I have a smoke screen. Okay, their health is way down now. Then again, everybody else has been defeated and run off. Mm, I suck at this. Okay, well, I think we're going to end the episode here. Not the live stream, but the episode here. I want to thank all of you who've suffered through this catastrophe of uh, me trying to learn this game. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. So if you know, if you know, we have any ideas, please um, post them below. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And of course, you can like the video even because I suck greatly. Okay, guys, I don't know if we should continue this. Have you tried clicking on the enemy? Yes, we have clicked on the enemy. It does nothing. We hover over it. It tells us what's going on. Um, they're coming back in here. Well, it looks like we got them finally. We're being... This company is firing at that company. Now they're in cover of the town and we're shooting back. So now we're running away, but it looks like maybe we got them? No, nope, they're still there. Move out of that artillery barrage. Just doesn't seem like my units are firing at them much. Once in a while I did, or firing effectively, because they did say that 
um, blue lines only appear when you're doing damage. So maybe they were firing, but not effectively because they were entrenched. I don't know. Okay. Well, I had some other ideas for possible games to play here. I don't know um, what um, you guys might want to see. We have Revolution Under Siege, which is a Russian Civil War game, 1917 to 1923. I have not played that, um, but I do have that. I don't know if we want to do another Watch Gamer Learn. Um, There is the new patch out for Imperator Rome. I don't know if we should try to look at that. All the new content there. Uh, play some Dark Souls. Um, do I uh, have that? I don't think I have that. No, I don't have that, so no. Get it? I don't know. Don't know the game, so I don't know. Um, and again, to those that are here, because I made at the beginning of the thing, I'm thinking about adding a um, Friday um, noon, nine p.m. Europe time to my streaming um, normal schedule don't know if you guys think that's a good time good day um, so feedback on that other suggestions i have would be um for now today i don't know um or if you have something strategy yeah, I don't I don't ever use a controller, so I wouldn't do some curry wall. But yeah, I know. Lum, you're just hanging out. So don't know um what you guys might want to see since other than Lum, no one's giving me feedback on some of my suggestions here. Um hmm, and it looks like Aries maybe gone away. Um because he didn't Perk up over the Russian Revolution stuff, Russian Civil War. Pike and shot. No, not pike and shot. Um, White Russia. Oh, you're here now? Now you're here? I don't know. How about some Command and Conquer? That's just a strategy game, right? Well, I haven't played Command and Conquer in so long. Um, I do, I'd have to install that, not that it would take too long. I think I have it here. Don't I? Yeah, I have, uh, no, that's, no. No, I don't have that in my current. I played that way back, I mean, before Steam ever happened. Um. Hmm. Looking through this here well you know let's take a look at radio commander it's been a long time since i've played that and then um okay well let's let's get out of this quit your screen will go black here quick soon okay radio commander back to vietnam is busy with the nation sim. Well, um, Command and Conquer, Command and Conquer Red Alert, or whatever, way back in the, I mean, like when they very first came out, when it was Command and Conquer, whatever the original was. A buddy of mine really loved it. I liked it. He was pretty damn good at it. Okay. All right, to send anonymous statistics. Yeah, okay, whatever. Okay. Combat missions. 
I don't know, it's been a long time since I've played this. Okay, Operation. If you can, there's no way to retreat. You must fight to the very end. Your infantry platoons, Alpha and Bravo, are well entrenched. The hill. Make use of your artillery, Foxtrot, and air support. Um, Armor at one. Units provide medevac and um, ammo supplies with the use of your transport helicopter. Green one. Good luck. Play. Yeah, I don't remember. We're talking more than 20 years ago, Lum. Whatever was out there then. Okay, well, this is new. Guy's doing jumping jacks outside the window here. Now, remember, guys, that we're, we basically command this while we're in this tent. I don't know if there's any... Well, I guess we can walk out here and, like, shout at the... Um, the helicopters, you know, are they you back? Shout at the artillery here. Look around now. Okay, well, here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me get back to the radio. Look at the chair, click at the chair. There we go. Okay. We can click at the map. Zoom out, zoom out. Now you can more than some video messages now. Choose dialogue options, click. Okay. I don't know. Yes, I'm just looking through this just to sort of get this. Yeah, maybe I should. Uh, maybe I should not just do this now. Ah, uh, this isn't a good game. Let's. I mean, it's not. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I just don't. We gotta learn a little better than maybe do it live on. Let's try the Russian Civil War. Revolution under siege. Hey Arno. Okay, let's. And no, I haven't really played this either, which is of course good to do in a live stream is learn what you're doing. Blue Russian Civil War sounds boring. Well maybe. I haven't played it yet.
Yeah, well, I turned down the audio, but it's still loud. Okay. Um, I do... I do this normally for most things reduce the audio. Okay. Okay, options. Okay. Um What the hell? Okay. Um, it's not letting me turn this down more for me that's a little better music how can we turn the music off um Okay, we have to quit. Come on, quit, 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 motherfucker. Huh. Now it may not have music, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you, it's lovely. Yeah, no music. Yay. It wasn't going down. I don't know. I normally have to turn all the music either off or way low. Um, game designers think that you want their music blaring at you the first time you play the game. Okay, we're going to turn just regular to say sound effects on. It says I have to, you have to restart the game if you enable sounds. Okay. Okay, we've enabled sounds. Oh, no, that seems to be working there. Oh, well. Um, new game. Okay, tutorial user interface orders. Okay. Um, sounds like an idea here. Let me move the game audio back up there. Enter the name of your game. Tutorial LP. One live play one Finland Okay, welcome to tutorial for Revolution Under Siege based on the AGE engine. You should do this every Friday game or see to struggle with a new strategy. Well, there's enough strategy games out there that I could probably do 50, 50 some a year. Yeah. Um, welcome to the tutorial of Revolution of the Siege, basically. Yeah. This is the first three short scenarios which will explain the basic game um, functions. Please note the tutorial will not cover all aspects of the game. Far more detailed information, please refer to the manual. The game was designed to offer both strategic depth and historical consistency without overwhelming the player with too much micromanagement or overly complicated rules. However, one still has to learn the game mechanics to master the game. The tutorial isn't. Yes, you may return to the main menu by clicking the small icon in the upper right corner. Okay, um, back to main menu there. Um, Proceed to the next message by clicking the arrow. Okay, yay. You can close this tutorial window with the button in the upper right corner. That will be there. Oh, escape key. Double click the red message tutorial. Okay, yes. Strategic map occupies the main part of the screen. 
That would be that. Well, the map looks pretty cool. Well, I know this is a bit of an older game, but I think the graphics are all right for what they're supposed to be. Sort of like a computerized board game, if you will. Well, it's the um, Revolution Under Siege. This, it's sort of the Russian Civil War would be the um, um, yeah, no, but I, I'm just looking at the, you know, the graphics here. You can tell what's forest. You see the railway connections, that kind of thing. Cover the map, move the mouse to yeah, around the border. Okay. Page up, page down, keys, military units. Okay, we can zoom out, zoom in. This is fully in. Keyboard directions, you can change the zoom up. Okay, well, the panel in the top left corner of the screen shows a graphical depiction of the current weather in the region of your mouse. Okay, here is what they're talking about, even though the arrow is pointing there. So we can see we hover over it, this changes. I'm presuming we're in summer or some good time. I don't know what we've looked at. Oh, late January. Okay. Late January, no snow. That's the weather. Okay, I don't know. Um, region in the center of the screen, you have seven indicators showing your respective nation, national morale, the total number of victory points, engagements, points, money in thousands of rubles, conscripts in companies, war supplies in guns or tons, rail pool. If you want more detail of these resources, Press the mouse over each icon in the tooltip for the meaning of each value hint. There exists a tooltip for almost every object on the screen. Okay, national morale, victory points, engagement points represents capacity of political actions, your government administration, thousands of rubles, conscript pools, change per turn to, war supplies, change per turn to, railway transport capacity. It's it's a high strategical value. One, it allows very fast movement of your forces along the regions. The railroads each turn the remaining railroad transport capacity that is not used to move your forces is automatically used to transport food and ammunition supplies between your depots. The last use of the railroad transport capacity becomes a critical necessity during the Russian winter in supplying your fronts. In Finland, everything's forest. Yeah, it looks that way. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. In the lower left corner, you can find the mini map. Okay, we have a mini map. Why don't they? Why don't all games just get one damn? format like all mini maps down here just so i know where to look use instantly jump to any map location also shows the position of your forces and known enemy forces above the mini map there are six buttons for different map filters above the mini map with there are two gun turrets for the armored train uh, don't click on them for now large left turret is also a button that takes you to the big to the building mode the small turret button takes you to the strategic atlas, the ledger, which contains a lot of useful information. I'm going to start recording this from here. So that I guess I'm going to put this up. Okay. Hello, fellow armchair generals. And I really didn't mean that uh, the thing to pop up. Um, yes. Hello, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745. I am live streaming this when I'm making this. And they're having fun watching me struggle with games by small indie games not doing well this is well i don't know if you want to call this a small indie game this is a um matrix game or slytherin whatever you want to call the company though maybe more of an indie development studio doing it i don't know um 
And so matrix sh should push on that. So um, we're starting me going through the tutorial. You might like this game if you're interested in the Russian Revolution. We will see if this game is any good. I have literally not played this at all before. So we're just sort of in the interface of the tutorial. We will see later on how they work. To the right of the mini map is the armored wagon rest. Uh, we, um, I think. Okay. Um, hitting the start recording button did something. Mini map the rest. If the force is currently selected, it will show in the units panel. Contain detailed information about the force. Okay. Um. It's Finland, it's all lakes. It's easy game where you get to shoot communists. Well, yeah, that part we're, we're happy with, get to shoot communists. Now please open the ledger by clicking the small turret or um, F1 key. Um, that would be click building mode. Yeah, I think this is already here. The page information you can investigate between these panels. You have the buttons. Okay, yeah, that's why the buttons at the bottom are pages more simply the function keys F1 through 10. So F1, F2, 3. Okay, we're not going to continue down because we're not going to use. Okay, here we could just click here. I'm a, I'm a mouse player. I prefer, oh, that's a nice map. Okay, um, page you're seeing at first F1 reverts to the first page when you choose. The overview of your forces, unit groups, in the game, the page filters. You can scroll through a long, or a long list on page one at a time by using, okay, remember that this page allows you to get a clearer picture of your forces and units by filtering, okay. Let's say we want to only view stacks with generals. Activate the corresponding filter by selecting the crossed out star icon ninth from the left. Um, here, this is what they're talking about. Um, Okay, I guess we can see here. Looking twice on the column header looks like three gold stars. Okay. Commander stats for the list, Finnish Army. Should be the first you see is located in the Vasa region. Um, I don't know that I clicked on the right one, but yeah, I um, don't know where the Vasa region is. Up here. Oh, there we go. No, I don't know Finnish geography well at all. Um, it'll be the first one to see. We will pay them a visit. The action will close the ledger and center on the stack. Click on the Finnish flag. To the left of this group name entry, do that now and then click on the next message arrow of the window. So we're going with that. There, okay. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's an air unit. I don't know if that's what we were supposed to be seeing. So we're seeing the different units here. This is supply. Okay, movement orders. In the units panel, you will now see units that are currently selected. Okay, down here. Um, stack CG Mannerheim is a general commanding several units. Finnish Army, as you can see. Where is Mannerheim? Um, is that Mannerheim? No, that's not Mannerheim. Hmm. 
thinking he's not a red, so. Why am I not finding manor line? So I did something screwy, yes. Um, let's go back. Finish army, that's, there we go, we want to get to that. There we go, okay, so there, now we have that highlighted, very good. Now let's go forward. Okay, now, and what's Luminary been saying? And you keep hitting your arms on it, I'm scared. I don't know what you're referring to. I guess not quite lazy slug like you, but moving my arms. So you guys are just going on about some something weird. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Okay, commanding several units of the um, Finland army. As you can see, if you have several groups of a unit in a region, you will also see several tabs at the top of the unit list panel. Okay, so we have the Vasa garrison, the Finland army, the Finnish transports, and the Finnish air force. Okay, I'm getting that now. Um, right, now... It's time to order your soldiers to march. This is done quite simply by click, drag, and drop. Let's try this. Make sure that Mannerheim stack is still selected. You see him. Okay, yes, we see Mannerheim. There is a younger man that I'm used to seeing him. Um, photographed. Um, yeah, it's still so you see his units. The panel then on the map, click on him while holding the button and drop him in the region of Hampanski to the southeast. Follow the railroad tracks. Okay, that's Hampanski. Okay, so we click, drag, drop. Okay, that seems doable. Okay, the movement will follow the railroad tracks if you did well. The stack will automatically choose the path that requires the shortest time. The movement speed is heavily influenced by the terrain type, the weather, the presence of roads, and of course the force itself. Along the path, a number of days to reach the region are shown. Okay, three, six, okay, nine days. So I guess it's three day turns, maybe. Um, oh, whatever, guys. Um, you can delete single sections of the path by pressing the delete key to delete the whole path. You can simply drag the unit symbol shown in the target region back to its starting position or town. Okay, please delete the movement path now by delete or dragging the unit back. Um, we'll just drag the unit back. Okay, please, yeah, um, and if you hold the shift while dropping the unit, the starting region, the movement pass won't be deleted. Okay. You reorganize your units is done in a similar way. Please select the Finland Army stack of Mannerheim again. Okay, we still have it selected. Um, you should have aborted the order and must be standing still in the last now. We will now create a new stack by splitting its two supply units from him. Fins don't eat, they march. Okay, um, if you don't see these units, use the next unit. Okay, I see the two supply units. Arrow key to the right of the unit scroll panel. Then select the two supply trains to select a unit. The panel click on it and to select more than one, hold the control key. Okay, so we will select, control, select. Got those selected. Don't be surprised to see numbers when you hit control holding the control key. Okay, 
Now we will drag the supply unit wagons from the unit panel and place them in the VASA region. Okay, so um, okay, so they're there now. Um, soup, yes, soup, Arno, for sure. And now we've got Click on one of the two selected units, then without releasing the button. Well, yes, we've done that. Okay. Unit panels now show five tabs. Um, I don't know that they show five tabs, but okay. Um, Mannerheim column, finish transport. So I don't see the air units there anymore. Um, important concept to remember the tabs showing the stacks um, above the unit panel also represent the stacks it means that it is possible to merge two tabs because they're also stacked okay please merge the newly created supply unit stack with the finnish army stack now okay um I think I did that right. Mannerheim's columns, and you can prevent units from merging by right clicking. Okay. okay, let's examine VASA again. You can see several stacks there. Yes, we have the Mannerheim column, that VASA garrison. And I thought we had air power, but maybe we're not seeing that anymore. Hello, Toy Jet. Okay, let's examine Voss again. You can see several stacks. There's some located outside the city in a variety of indicators, a two in the tan color. Okay, um, hmm. Okay, the tan color near the city indicate that there are two forces in the city itself. The tan icon may be... I'm not getting this. Oh, is it not the letter? No? Okay. I'm doing well. I'm so glad chat's having fun. Simply drag the stacks elsewhere in the region. Okay. Move that over there. I'm not seeing a tan icon. Are you guys seeing a tan icon? Okay, um, little blue icon. Oh, maybe I messed this up. I don't know. Blue icon shows where the fleet, okay, select this city itself um so like the city itself the units panel will open and unit symbols will appear in the city you should see a force called are we supposed to be down here air force mm.
And we do have the planes there. <laughs> Are you winning, Gramps? <laughs> 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 That's funny. <laughs> the city is a separate place within its region. The revolution under siege. These small blocks in the unit pictures indicate these units are fixed to the region. Okay. Um, okay. I'm seeing a tan icon there now. Um, now please finish Air Force tabs. Well, that disappeared for me. Why did that disappear? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I want to find the Finnish Air Force. Okay, well, you know what I'm going to do here is back to main menu. Now we're going to try new game. Now we're going to do this. That. Okay, we're just going to push forward through here. We've done this. Yes. Yes. Ledger, yes. Okay, movement orders. Yes. Right, we've done that. Yes. How do we get out of this mode here? There we go. That's not necessarily the mode I was looking for. Oh, this is working out great. Hope this is entertaining, people. Um, this is this is in the build section, so I want to get out of this. Okay. Okay, finish Air Force. Well, we have the finish Air Force here. We can click on it. Okay, finish Air Force. Um, now please finish Air Force. The tabs show you to pick easily. The stack resides outside of the city. Um, to move it inside, simply drag and drop the stack to the city symbol on the map. Looks like it's... Yes, that's doing that. Um, I'm holding the unit over the city, the release mount button, okay. Please move the unit to city now if you press the right mouse button this will dis disappear and you can access the stack again by selecting the city right mouse button select the city and there we go okay hey gramps is learning this okay what are we what are we are we trying to get me hey pixel there's a tool tip at least yes are we um, trying to get me demonetized there or something, um, Mary? Don't know. Um, what a yes, I'd love a piece of chocolate. Um, love chocolate. Okay, Mary. 
I no, I don't. No, nah, no, not into Mountain Dew. Vigilant rifle, Belgium. Okay. America, I thought you only used real guns. Um, I think they have Nerf guns. I'm gonna email it to you then. Thanks, Toy Jet. I wish email would work that way. You know, when I was a kid, because see, I if you don't know people watching um, later on and not one of the, the cool kids that hang out with me a lot. That's weird saying that. But yeah, um, one of the cool kids that hang out with me a lot. Um, you might not know that I'm old, really, really anciently old. Um, but when I grew up, we could have toy guns that looked like real guns. They didn't even have these damn stupid little red things at the end of the barrel. So if it's sort of like pointed at you, you sort of see, oh, no, it's it's just a toy. You don't have to worry about it. No, they were like, I had this um, Luger looking, you know, it was a Luger, metal Luger, but I mean, just a a, a toy um, one, um, but yeah, a Luger, um, multiple sort of, you know, oh, and they were cap pistols. So when you, um, like pulled the trigger, they went pink, bang, whatever, little cap, little, and little, um, black powder smoke would rise out of it and they had rolls of cap paper in it. So you could point and pull the trigger, bang, 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 bang. I mean, it doesn't, bangs nothing like a real gun. But yeah, we had those, and those were for little kids. So yeah, used to be a good, fun world before the SJWs. I sort of kind of prefer milk chocolate, but I love all wood chocolate pixel. Um, chocolate's wonderful. Chocolate's the food of the gods. Yeah. Um, that's, ma that's the manna they talk about. Manna from heaven is chocolate. Most assuredly, I have at least something chocolate every day. It could be a candy bar, it could be chocolate cake, it could be, you know, a cookie with chocolate frosting on it. Something chocolate every day, just about, if not twice a day or something, you know. Not necessarily huge amounts of chocolate, but something chocolate every day. It's sort of that. And these guys, these guns still exist. They're called replicas, and you can, no, they're not quite the replicas i'm talking we're talking stuff that you give like a five-year-old they're not like replicas you give them to a, a a little kid and he runs around the neighborhood going you know with the, the cat pistol going pop 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 as you shoot it and whatnot and not these silly nerf things that are made to not look like guns so not confuse police officers so they don't shoot kids police officers just didn't shoot kids in the old days now it's it's different So, the cult of chocolate. It's the man. It's the manna from heaven. Yes, yes, yes. Well, maybe you still have them in Switzerland there, but they don't. I mean, they sell replica guns, but they're not sold as toys to kids in toy stores. You don't go see them in toy stores anymore here in America. Not in a long, long time. But yeah. Okay, another way to move units is transported by ship. Please select the city of Vasa to open the panel again. I think we're still there. And select the tab, finish transports. Um, finish transports, there we go. Um, now you see some naval units located in the harbor. The crate and the small barrels in the upper left corner of the unit symbols shows that these trans. Our, our transport ships, um, freight and barrels, um, upper left. Ah, here, okay. Large transport, tiny transport. Okay, so we have transports. Now you see some naval indicators in the harbor. That, okay, yeah, I've got that part. Tooltip informs you that the single ship unit has a transport capacity of one. Tooltip, yes. We do like the tooltips. Tooltips in this are nice. And Pixels probably played this a lot, but I have, like, as you're, anybody's watching guests, I have not played Revolution Under Siege before. Um, and the whole stack has a capacity of 41. That would be the big one with that. Okay. Now select the Finnish army, the Finland army, I should say. Um, again, check the weight of the stack of the tooltip is 34. Um, 
Is it there? Or is it? I'm believing it's 34, but. Okay, I see weight per um, individual unit here. Let's see. Okay, wait. Oh, I see it there. Um, right above also here, weight 34. Right. Okay, found that. This means that the ships have enough capacity to be transport these units to load them on. Two ships simply merge the units by dragging and dropping the Finnish Army tab. Okay. Um, Finnish Army tab to there. Um, I'm probably going to say don't do that, but I've already done it. To load, uh, simply drag and drop the Finnish Army tab. Select the fleet stack and move it. To Pori, a port city in the region further to the south, you can see you only need a few days for the trip. Okay, the passengers will disembark on now. Let's okay. Um, here we are. Okay, now get down there and make sure it's yeah. There, um, now end the turn now. Yay. Um, do we just click that? Button single arrow. Okay, single arrow button. Oh, I'm sure there's lots of fake harness. Yeah, um, good good advice there, Pixel, I'm sure. Stack weights and command priorities. Command is a good thing to um, replicate in the game. Every turn last two weeks, your orders and those of your enemies are carried out simultaneously. You see the report about everything that happens during the turn. Okay, here we are down here. Um, top left, the message logs are six buttons. To filter the message is especially useful. The bigger scenarios may, with many events, the message log will tell you about the arrival of your ships in Hori. Okay. Um, there we are. Fleet has arrived in Pori at day four. Would Pori be something like a translation of, here in English, be port? Hmm. Don't know. Maybe it has nothing to do with that. You select only the message screen to center it on the region itself. Okay, select it. Okay. So we can see where Taku region is. Okay, um, itself has unloaded in Pori while being renamed Colonel Mannerheim. You will also see the last message in the message logs announcing the arrival of the armored train in Karelia. More about that in the third tutorial. And the game is automatically saved at the end of the turn for the more backups. Okay, load screen. We conclude the first part of the tutorial. Next, you learn about the organization of your forces and chain of command. Please press Escape to open the main menu and select New Game and Tutorial. Okay, so Escape, New Game. Someone actually wanted to play by mail opponent for, or the other day on Discord server I'm part of. Oh, cool. Revolution, yeah. Um. It definitely looks like a good game. Obviously, I haven't played this. Um, yeah, we'll just leave that here. And yes, we're playing as Finland. And I like I like the time period because, as I, all of you, the regulars here know, I love talking about history, and I just really haven't had anything good to talk about um, games playing uh, Russian Civil War with the Republic of Ushkashokos. Oh, I'm butchering that. And also um, General Wrangel, who fought down in this part of the area. He's a hero of mine, I guess. Um, and probably a lot of other people. Uh, Mannerheim's another hero. Recently posted a um, video on my um, YouTube channel talking about uh, Francisco Franco in Spain in the, you know, World War II era, you know, not just World War II, um, but another sort of 
I think hero that did very well for his country is Mannerheim. Um, he, you know, is, I don't know if, how Europeans take this term, but he very much seems to be the George Washington of his country, military and political leader, who um, kept his country from being conquered, either by the Soviets or the Germans or anybody else. So did a very, very good job of that. And so I'm sure you can criticize him, whether you're finished or not. But um, ultimately, he succeeded in his goal, in his objective of maintaining a relatively free and independent Finland. So that is um, something to be very proud of. And however much, and I just see Toyjet going on about um, Poland and the um, Battle of Warsaw and the Polish-Soviet War, Poland, of course, geographically is poorly situated. So I, at least in the modern industrial sense, I don't know that you can, you know, well, I mean, the Battle of Warsaw definitely is a, um, an underdog defeating um, a larger power, you know, the Soviets coming in there. But if you look in the terms of World War II, there's just no way. You can put the most brilliant general, whoever you think he may be, or roll the top five most brilliant generals in there. They aren't going to win and keep Poland free and independent. Um, just whether it's the Soviets, the Germans, it just ain't going to happen. It's not going to be allowed to happen. So geography does play a part. Absolutely. But I, you know, as we see, there are red fins. I in no way think that it's a foregone conclusion. I think people matter. They might not be able to completely change the yeah, outcomes like a Poland is an example, but um, people people matter in history. It's not just some great tide of um, proletariats. My man Joseph Pil Sadowski is bowling on the Poland or whatever I don't know on the Bolsheviks. So welcome to the second tutorial. Learn about chain of command and army corps. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna click that. Little. Let's begin at the lowest level: brigades and their component element regiments or squadrons. Navy or for naval units, batteries for artillery. Okay, a thousand men each. Take a look at the um, forces named Hugland's column at Vasa. Okay. Um, there we go. Um, at Vasa in the north of East area. You should see nine units. In the units panel at the bottom of the screen, one is showing a general's portraits, the rest infantry brigades. Please select the fifth white guards. Racists. Um, to the right of the units panel and the elements panel to display two infantry regiments. Mm. No. What am I not? Okay, um, militia type. Let's summarize regiment, battery, and squadrons. Oh, okay, you can get additional information about elements by selecting. Okay, I get that. You have now opened a window which shows many details about this element. Okay, well, maybe I haven't opened the window properly yet. Let's go back. Um, what one showing? Okay, fifth white guards to the right of the unit. Nope, that isn't doing it. Um, What am I missing here?
and by selecting a corresponding symbol on the elements panel. Um, Ah, over here, way over here, because I said to the right, and I was looking here, but way over there. Okay. Okay, cool. So we can click there, one. Okay, there we go. Now I'm, I'm getting what they're talking about, way over to the right, not just in this panel. On the M symbol of the militia. I just mean by that okay so you have now opened a window it shows many details about the element below the values experience strength another two units left column close the elements window now please okay hello spiraling thragnak Osten. well not necessarily that, but yeah, we are looking at the Russian Civil War. White Russia, what racist? Yes, Ari, you 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 got the um the joke that the whole world is having to live through. You know, you do know. Okay. How do I put this? Okay. I don't know if, if people realize out there, but the Marxes are comedians, okay? Please understand this. The Marxists are comedians. They're a family of comedians. Many generations of them, I don't, some of them are very obscure in history, I'm sure. Carl's father, we, I don't know anything about him. I've never even heard about Carl's father. Don't know, you know, who he is, what he is. But I'm sure he's something of a comedian. Marx, the Marxes, the families, Carl Marx, is a comedian. He wrote this very, very dark comedy, you know, um, Das Kapital and some of these other books. It's it's a very, very dark comedy. And um, unfortunately, what was supposed to be read as a, um, you know, a, a sort of comedy book like, hey, yeah, th isn't this funny if this would be, let's all have a laugh, sort of, you know, dark humor. Well, there's people have actually tried to put it in place. You know, the communists, people like Lenin, Mao, they've tried to perpetrate this dark comedy on this. So then they use, um, if you look at the um, Call of Duty, new the new um, uh trailer thing where they talk about how the communists are trying to destabilize the West and um, use race as a way. So the social justice warriors are Marxist comedians. Now, I like some, I mean, no, I should say I love some uh, Marxist humor. It's really good. But see, I follow the light side, the good side of Marxist humor. I am all for the good light side of Marxism. As espoused by the main um, proponent of light Marxism, Groucho Marx. Now, Chico, Harpo, Gummo, Zeppo, they're good too, but Groucho Marx is one of the greatest comedians of all time. Now, he is, you know, light comedy, fun comedy, not dark comedy where millions of people get killed and those that survive it, um, you know, have, you know, can only laugh about how dark it is. So um, I'm a Groucho Marxist. I'm an anti-Karl Marxist. So yeah, I'm firmly in the Groucho Marx camp. So um, just... 
Yep, no millions of dead on Groucho Marx, and I don't know if you all know who he is. You bet your life. And so you should know who Groucho is. He is a wonderful light side comedian. So yes, I am a Groucho Marxist. Carl, that he's he's the evil bad Marxist. In order to fight efficiently, troops need to be commanded by a skilled general while being in a stack, which is not too big for him. The three of the five units you are looking at have no such leaders and thus suffer combat penalties and fights. Among them is Hoogland's column at the top of the right unit's panel. You will see several symbols to the right of these is a flashing 30%. Okay, I see it flashing 30%. Warns you about this penalty that um, the top tooltip further gives further information. Okay, when I'm over the envelope, it does. It requires to, okay, so he needs a lot more command points. We will now organize some of the, your units. Please select the stacks, Finland, Army, and Vasa. Okay, and for a demonstration. See, there's a lot of general type units. Okay, um, we're going to, the live stream's gonna go on, folks, but we're gonna end this um, episode here. Come back next time for more fun watching Gamer Learn how to play a game. I hope it's entertaining, maybe informative for you as well. See you next time, my friends. Okay, I'm going to grab a Coke and I'll be right back. Are they related? I have no idea if they're related. Um, Groucho, Harpo, and Chico, I do believe their last name is actually Marx, but um, those are stage names. Um, you know, the Harpo, Chico, Groucho uh, part. Um, Minnie was their mother, the, the, the Marx. I'm, I have some books on, um, you know, Groucho and the, the Marx Brothers, bit of a fan. I forget their father's name. I don't know if there's any, to my knowledge, there's um, no like, you know, direct lineage there, but are they some part of a greater big family? Very well, maybe. So be back in a moment. I'm almost back. Oh no, yes, run, hide, Arno, run, hide, quick, fast. Wait a minute, I can't get at you through the internet. You don't have to hide from me. Okay. You should see four units marked with a silver stripe under the names and a bold NATO symbol. Uh, okay. Okay, I guess those are there. Uh, upper right corner of the picture, these are divisions. Divisions can contain several brigades, which 
are themselves made of regiments, squadrons, batteries, elements. If you hover the mouse over the unit's division symbol, the commanding general, the brigade's contains will appear over the left panel. If you select the division, you will also see all the elements in the division panel. Okay, so, okay, cool. Seeing those up there. He has a battery set up. Okay, cool. Note that the units of the Finland Army stack um, suffer from combat penalties of 20%. Well, seeing 10 here, but okay. Uh, however, um, hover the mouse cursor over the tab, read the tool tip. Shows that the has 12, 12 command points, but needs 16 for optimal operation. Larger the force, the more command points are needed. For example, combat brigades usually need one command point and zero for support brigades. You can check the exact values with the tool tip. Okay. Due to its more efficient organization, division only needs four command points. Even if it contains more than four regiments, the command point model makes it difficult to control large troops concentration without implementing a chain of command. A force needing a CP suffers a penalty. Okay, troops are controlled by generals who supply command points. The higher the rank, the general, the more command points he produces. One star. Oh, I should be recording this. Oh, no, that's not good. Okay, um, let's see if we stop this. Okay, we're going to need to do it manually here. I don't want that popping up. Let me go back to selecting our army again. Okay. Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing look at the tutorial for Revolution Under Siege. We are recording this, well, I'm streaming this live while recording this, and so we're going to have some fun with the interaction. Quick sink our lands. Gamer's back. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Standard Dutch, modern Dutch tactics. Enemy invades, sink the nation under the sea. Okay, um, let's continue. If the general is not part of a chain of command, i.e. the stack is neither a core or nor an army, he suffers 50% penalty known as out of command um, chain penalty. So a one-star general will um, generate two CP, not four. A number of command points in a single stack can receive is limited to 22 or 11 if outside of the chain of command. Okay. You can have bigger as well command stacks. I mean, the unit panels, um, Select the Finland Army Group HQ. Um, Finland Army Group Mannheim. Okay. Um, Click oh, okay. Um, no. otherwise, just click it. Okay, there are three generals, Mannerheim being a four star, the rest being two star, one star. If a general doesn't command a unit, you will see his stars directly on the unit panel. Otherwise, just click each leader portrait and see if there is a two star, one star NATO symbol. The elements let's reassign Luststorm to the Finnish army group to help with the command points. Click on the Storm's unit in the command panel and drag and drop him onto the Finnish Army tab. Now select the Finnish Army. Okay, so we're um, we need to close this, I think. Okay. Um, Wolf Storm. Nope. I did something wrong here. So we wanted to move into the Finland army. Okay. There we go. There we go. Points click on the storm's unit, unit panel, drag and drop on the Finland army. Now select the Finland army. They are now receiving 12 command points. Remember, 
the stack is independent and not a core or army. There's a 50% penalty, a 20% pulsating. Okay, well, I see 10, but whatever. I may have changed since they made the tutorial. Our unit needs at least 16 command points in the tooltip note. Okay. So... What about legs on your chair? Hey, Harry. I hope those are nice things you're saying, and I'm guessing finish, but we don't need to, of course, be demonetized. Nice things are good. As long as we are fixing things, let's help out Hoogland's group. Select that tab, Hoogland's column. Okay, um, to the left, the unit panel, you will see several buttons. This special special orders panel, there are three groups of buttons visible via the symbols at the top of the panel. Um, here, okay. Please select and wavy arrow. Um, okay. A wavy arrow, a tent, and a pistol. Click on the tent to access the command unit organization. There we go. Tent. Please select General Hugland. On the special orders panel, you will have a button for some soldiers in that tent. Okay. Um, General deleted this is not free. Please check the tool tip. With this command press the button. I think I did that right. Now we select Hoogling and the units to integrate into this division. Hold control keys to select all these units. You're into a single division, you can do this. Clicking on combine button. There we go. There we go. Yay! We did something. To a single division, you can either click the combine, okay, it is a symbol, okay, tent symbol, or by hitting. The nine single you disappear, okay, yes, that's happened. Okay, if you look next to the envelope symbol, you can see the combat penalty has decreased to 10%. Okay, because you organize units in division, they need less command points. Yay! I mean, I was just really stealing lyrics from... Okay, cool. Fine. You know, I'm just seeing weird letters appearing. I think Eric had a stroke. Well, that... He may have had a stroke, too, Arno. And just as he's mashing stuff on his keyboard... Posting Finnish propaganda. Well, that ain't the worst thing in the world. If it's white Finnish propaganda, that is. Okay. Okay, command points due to the out-of-command chain penalty is still lax. Okay, the highest level of chain of command army uh, is the army which command center operates. Thanks to its headquarters, attach an army... Attached to an army are one or more core, and each can hold several divisions, right? Yes. Um, at the movement, our forces contain neither an army at the, or at the moment, yes. Army nor core, so we have to create them. Select the Finnish Army HQ now. There we go. To build an army, you need a three or four star general. Let's give command to Mannerheim. To do so, you need to have the tent tab selected. We have it. Um, 
Selected Special Orders panel then um, pass the mouse without clicking over the button of the Officers tab before the table. Um, Okay, let's see, yeah. Uh, we should go all three to the four-star generals and will not close a return mark. We need to command if the Finns had one, name another three-star general as army commander, but we would see that this general's less seniority will get in trouble with Mannerheim himself. So it will cause rippling problems among the nation. Very interesting, knowing the national morale. So they have a, um, and I can see this in their, especially in the Russian part of the Russian Civil War effect. They were very, very um, quick analysis here. One of the reasons, and there's more than one, trust me, more than one, but one of the reasons the whites lose the Civil War, in my opinion, and a major one, not the biggest one, but one of the major ones is, shall we say, um, command jealousy. Um, or, and I don't know if that's quite the right word, but, you know, they're sort of, hey, I was Grand Archduke whatever field marshal this under the czar so i must be the one in charge and then some other guy yeah but i was also this other you know the same type of thing but of a different area under the czar and so there's all this conflict going on in the russian high command as to who is in charge and some of the stuff because you have what kolshak Back here with the Republic of Ushkashovkas, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering that. And, you know, fighting back here sort of on the Ural front. And then you had the guys down here on the sort of, um, I don't know, what is this, the Don front or whatever you want to call it down here. And, yeah, you really can't, you know, there was no direct connection. I mean, they had, I don't know whether it was radio or carrier pigeon or whatever but they had some you know general idea of communication back and forth but the guy commanding over here can't command here in any meaningful way just at the time technologically not capable of happening for like i say meaningful way and so you have some of that but even within the sort of command fronts you have um, who is an acceptable commander to the others. And so you may get a bunch of, say, two-star generals that none of them can agree that a, a different one of them should be the leader. Now, they might accept some other higher level, higher ranking, older person that doesn't conflict with them. And so you get this really bad problem of a lack of um, centralized purpose. Now, part of part of it is, like we were sort of saying, is geographical in that you have Moscow in the center here. And, you know, whether it's the Finns, the Baltic states, um, Kolshak over out there, the guys down in the south. Um, yeah, they're all pressing from different angles or different paths in which is a problem but you have a centralized command that can deal with it where these are all disparate by geography as well you go to the battle of okay whatever um i'm not going to read all of your lyrics airy but go ahead and post them i'm cool with that okay if you read the tool manner has the most seniority so i could see that as that if you have a leader that is a better leader putting him in charge of something um in, in some of the Russian white units might not be the best thing because of that sort of problem. Because somebody like a Wrangel who, what was he, a colonel at the time of the revolution? Um, is definitely one of the better, maybe not the best, I don't know, but one of the better white generals. And probably one of the ones that is most focused on winning the war. 
where a lot of them are focused on very political games and it's not just like the idea that hey yeah i'm living in luxury here and the um troops outside are cold hungry and whatnot there is an element to that going on that the generals didn't care they did care at least i would say they cared but it's just more the way they were used to living but that isn't the real problem it's more of um I don't know, a lack of drive to push push in, meaning that they have their army. They're worried about supplying it. A lot of times they go, yeah, well, we have um, 10 bullets per, for every soldier that we have. So uh, And so they're worried about the supply. So they don't want to push on the enemy because they don't have the, you know, the munitions. Because once you fire those 10 bullets, now all you have is a short pike, you know, a rifle with a bayonet on it. And, it, you know, compared to a... Um, guy that has any sort of number of bullets you're at a massive disadvantage so they're often playing you know worrying about their supply chain sure a few guys at the top are often living in luxury and that is a bit of a an actual problem you know using um not best using your your um, supply chain resources and as part of a um perception problem for your for your soldiers but Wrangle, I'm not saying Wrangle was, you know, a, an iconoclast or a, you know, a leveling type person that didn't want to live well, but he was much more focused on winning the battles and driving on the enemies, where the other generals were more focused, shall we say, on the politics of the situation. How much is this game? Well, um, the Krispy Kremer. I, I bought this game for very, very little a while ago on um, Fanatical. You ought to look at Fanatical as part of a bundle. So I probably paid a dollar, maybe two, for this game, but as part of a bundle. Um, I don't think the, the, the bundle is still for sale on Fanatical. You can find the, the game on um, Matrix's website or look up in Steam. It, it can be found there and might not be terribly cheap there so um yeah i don't specifically have a price for it and if you find it on sale it can be very cheap it's a bit older of a game so yeah it, it can be found cheap if you look for it but i don't specifically know what the price is now and i i got this game oh probably well less than two months ago so um it's not been that long Okay, now the three jar. Okay, um, national morale. This is one of the central concepts of chain of command. You can't name who you want as army commander. You are supposed to follow the seniority rule, and more often than not, you'll have to name poor generals in charge. So we will select Mannerheim and name him army commander. Now click on the button to create an army. Okay, we have him selected. Um, form army, I guess. And just, um, it's, I know it's not, it's Revolution Under Siege is the game name. Um, I didn't change that. I guess I couldn't. Well, it's in a couple of places. Bit of a problem to change it. Um, I can, can I do it live on YouTube? I know I can do it. Um, live on Twitch now, but YouTube doesn't have all of the functionality that Twitch does. Really quick. Okay, let's just see if I can update the game here. Update what the game is being here.
There we go. Should be updated there and go to creator dashboard on Twit. Get stream info. Yes, there we go. That should help people find it. There we go. Continue with this. So as you can see, you play, I think you play either side of the, of the situation. Uh oh, no, no, no. Okay. Um, Okay, didn't know we could scroll this way through it. Of course, um, command point, uh, and get back to where we were. As long as we're fixing things, help. But yeah, right, okay. You need a four-star general. Okay, create a new Finland. Don't mingle it with Luft Storms group, okay. Um, Finland Army. Usually the tab is now golden with a star. Yeah, I see a gold with that there. Um, portrait appeared. Not later. Over here, cool. Um, each army has certain command radius. You can see the command radius on the map. Um, by selecting the army here, um, flipping Vasa here. Okay, and hold the shift key. Okay, well, it looks like it may. Here in blue, the size of the command radius depends on the skills of the Army General. A commander with better skill also has higher command radius, being an excellent General Mannerheim's command radius is huge. Yep, okay. It certainly is. Okay, we will talk a bit about the skills of a General now. While Mannerheim is still selected, um, let's open the Elements um, Details window by clicking on the NATO symbol in the element panel. There we go. Um, symbol of four stars, his skills reflected by the different command ratings that you can see at the bottom of the window near his portrait strategic rating. Okay, a strategic offensive defensive. Describes the uh, operational, the strategic and operational powers of the general, how he maneuvers and reacts to the enemy, the influence of whether the general is is activated or not, um, please refer to the manual for further information about activation. Defensive rating. Defensive rating is combat bonuses when attacking or defending. In addition to the strategic offensive and defensive ratings, leaders may have several special abilities which are also visible in the elements window. Manor time has several such of these abilities. A tool tip will explain the meaning of over them. Okay, um, here we go. Our abilities here. Admired commander. Um, Army General HQ Commander, Master of Defense, Training Officer units will, units will train in its force up to two militia or conscript elements and two conscript or standard elements per turn. Very good. Another important quality of a general is his seniority. You will either find the value below the experience and strength values in the elements detail windows. Okay. Inside the number of stars ranking of a general is determined by this value. The lower the seniority value, the more important the general is. The lower the seniority value, the more important the general is. It seems counterintuitive. General seniority to politic 10, okay. This having a ranking of one is having seniority means that you are the most 
senior while a general says 50 means he's not very well known. Okay. Um, in any case, the seniority of given rank, three star is always higher in hierarchy than any two star. Now you have an army you can attach a core to. To create a core, you need a general with at least two stars. This general must reside within the command radius of the army. We will now name Lufstorm as core commander under command of Mannerheim. Please select Lufstorm's Finland Army Force. There, uh, no, come on. Well, we got to close this first. There we go. Um, okay, um, for this stack is still suffers from um, 20%, though it's saying 10. Because of out of command chain of command penalty. On the special orders panels um, tab, select temp symbol. Okay, we are a temp symbol. New order become available first column, second row represents the officer before his men. All prerequisites are filled. Check the tooltip. If you're unsure, you can declare stack a core um, of the main Finland army. Please do so. So, okay, create a core. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are now a core. Now you've created. The Finland Army Corps, they're all dead now, yes. If you select the Corps or the parent army, you will see on the map that the other stack, if visible, starts with a red, with a flash in red. Um, yes. It um, shows that they are connected by the chain of command. This tab is now in silver and a diamond appears on the army outliner uh, here. Okay. That looks like a diamond. Okay. Um, bonuses, chance, benefits attached. Of course, the out of chain of penalty disappeared. The stack now receives enough command points. Congratulations, you built proper chain of command. You can add Hugland's um, division to either the Finland Army Corps or to the main army to resolve um, the main command issue for him. This is the end of the second tutorial. Okay. Um, how do you attach? Okay. Oh, here. Oh, we don't want to split units. Um, we just drag and dropping it. Is that what we're supposed to do? There we go. Okay, so now he's part of that. And we can click on him, and yes, he has no longer command issues. Okay, cool. So, now we'll leave this and do tutorial. New game. Tutorial, attacking the enemy. Okay. Let's open up place Finland. Welcome to the third and last tutorial. In this tutorial, you will start an offensive into enemy territories. Please note that the tutorial is not intended to give you any strategic advice. Thus, the moves you are asked to make might not be in the best decision in a real campaign scenario. It is only to show you how the actions are carried out. In the last tutorial, you created a proper command chain, proper command chain for your forces. This is the start setup for the scenario deal with the Finn and armies advance on Helsinki. Lucky for you, the Reds are rather ill-prepared and help will not arrive rapidly. There, What's more, there is an idea of setting to understand how the games works. Also, this tutorial, the enemy is totally passive and the weather is always fair. Okay, yeah, I was wondering about the time of year and the weather. Okay, take a look at the ledger. You will find on page nine, simply press F9. I don't want to do that because um, 
that stops and starts my recording. So, um, let's. There we go. Objectives. There we go. Um, okay. For the, uh, the key victory and defeat conditions, information about losses. Okay. Yes. Under you know, objectives, impact national morale. If you, you and your enemies, you can see the temporary Torku and Helsinki are the three of our objectives not far from each other. If you click on the small flag next to Torku, Torku entry ledger. Okay. Um, Okay, there we go, down there. Um, each turn, those strategic cities and objectives are under your control. You'll get victory points also. Capture and objective impact national morale. Okay, yes. Ledger, the city is on the map. Unfortunately, you have no information about forces in the city in your area. Fog war. this means that the geography is unknown. You have no idea what's going on there. Okay. Um, a sufficient reconnaissance is very important as you want to know where the enemy is for every fog off, for every fog off region on the map, you have a detection rating. This rating is visible in the last line of the region tooltip. Uh, VASA, for example, shows detection rating four, which is detection region versus land units versus ship regions in the area. Where does the value come from? Basically from your units with you know, so the best detection value. Hmm, okay. Finish air. Okay. Um, readings for that region in Vasa. There are units. For your airplanes, the Finnish Air Force land detection, the swift dragoons of Murray Car via division in the lands form core it's only three you can check these values for every element the details the detection ratio also for example to adjacent regions is reduced by one there we will do reconnaissance to remove the fog of war select the scouting force in Amapansky um, and move them southwest to Vamula and the south of that okay um, got to figure out. Where's Vomansky? Or Hapmansky? Okay. I guess that is these guys. Yes. Um. Select a scouting force there and move them southwest um, um, there and then south to here. Okay, so there we go. I guess that's what we're supposed to do. It's communication. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's no. No, it's this scouting force here. Well, okay, we messed this up. Let's restart this. I know this is fun, but we don't have to reread everything. No, okay, we're back here.
Okay, there we go. There's our scouting forces. There we go. Okay, so we want to move these guys to here and then to here. Okay, that makes sense a little more. So I can you move them directly, the path will go through temporaire, which I guess is there. Um, and we're not yet ready to fight there if you have trouble locating the region. Okay, we found it. If no unit is present in the location, you'll get a base detection radio of two. If the area is under your control, if an enemy unit is present in the region, it's hide values compared to your detection. Let's move towards temporaire and Helsinki now. Okay, I am. Okay. Okay, select the Finland army is that's Hugland's column. Okay, um there we go, Finland Army. Open the first tab of the special orders panel. Orders panel the button marked with two arrows. Um here. Um, which may already be active or ready. This is a synchronization movement order. If you use this order, all army and core groups in the region belonging to the same army will move with the same speed to the same destination. This will make sure that all the corps move to their destination at the same time. This order can only be used with cores starting from the same region and belonging to the same army. Please double check that uh, is activated. Yes, okay, we have now activated this. Um, note days traveled for each force still indicates on the purpose. Okay. On to temporary now. Or army in low meter. You must drag and drop Wilma first. What are we doing here? What am I missing here? Okay. The temporary order the first to move. Finland army move to Lomia. Okay, that is. Not seen. Okay, just, oh, just down here. Okay, we've already. Okay, guys. Finland army to here. Mm -hmm. See that they are already coordinated. Um, yeah, it looks like they have this already active here, I guess. But the core, any core not in vessel will not coordinate with the army. Directly on the top of the panel, you will find two lines colored. These postures, first line, rules of engagement, busted in the posture of forces, determines how your troops react if they encounter enemy forces. That's these things. Um, influence of your troop. Can you just uh, play the function? As we move to attack the enemy, switch all your forces to the offensive posture. Offensive posture. The tooltips will explain the formation as we move to attack the enemy. So, try your forces. Please resolve the turn now. Okay.
Okay, welcome to turn two. So we've moved down here, we picked up the quarry, and we have the scouts down there as well. The message logs informs you that, um, now have I scared off Ari and everybody else, I guess, with the name change? And Lum, well, Lum may have something better to do, like sleep, I don't know. Oh, you're still alive, cool. Just didn't know, making sure. So late for Lum, he, I figured he'd probably go to sleep. You know, it's what, um, almost 11 o'clock at night for him. Just listening to finish music. Okay, good, cool. Just interested. Okay. The message logs informs you that some of your forces reached their destination, the Finland army. Now down here we have our various logs for the turn. Um, they also uncovered an enemy stack, the Torku garrison in Torku. Due to our marginal detection rating in the region, we only know that the units are present, but nothing about their strength. You can check this with the tool tip. Like over here, okay. Leader, militia, militia, hide value too. Um, Trying to do nothing about their strength. Let's attack the enemy in temporary first. The army there is strong, but we are, after all, led by Mannerheim. Note be wary of enemy corps which are barely detected, as they could receive help in battle from uncovered friendly corps. I'm just playing Risk of Rain 2, it's almost 12. I'm not being British. European time zones scare me. I have trouble trying to manage this. I'm still looking for someday getting a clock or a set of clocks or something like that so I can put out specific time zones so I can just look up at a glance. That's I remember somewhere seeing years and years ago now a really nice mechanical time clock that was a map of the world you know oh i don't know maybe 20 inches across maybe a foot tall um a foot is 12 inches you, and a foot is approximately the length of your foot just for you europeans um clock that had a map of the world and then little windows at uh, different places along it with the time zone sort of you know marked out on the map but then little windows so you would see as as you know the day would go on the time in each of the different zones around it so you didn't have to do math you could just see oh hey tokyo time is currently this and you know paris time is that and it just you know know the major areas and then of course you could look at the map to see what time zones are connected to Paris time kind of thing you know I really would love to get something like that yes Portugal does use the British time if I'm not mistaken they're sort of the one European mainland countries on Greenwich Mean Time where Spain France Germany are an hour earlier than British meantime okay um let's see support okay first notice you'll have to double click on to preparing to attack messages box it's armored trains okay Um, okay. Now the message box to continue the window after reading the following message. Oh, so we have to go back to the messages. No, did I put, butcher all this up badly again? How do we get back to the messages? I'm sure there's a way. Hmm. 
Maybe I'm not sure there's a way. Um, no, not main menu. Um, I'll replay previous turn. Cool. Oh, we'll continue game. Okay, here we are back here. Okay. Um, now we've lost the tutorial button. Man, how am I butchering this up so badly? Okay, guys. Hmm. Americans are the only ones who don't get the uh, metric system, but it's the main way of doing anything. You still rather use your back. What are British Imperial weirdo units? Yes, but, but they're actually different than the British Imperial units, though they're similarly named. Um, sort of our way of saying, fuck no, we're not Europeans. Um, we are Americans. Okay, guys, let's see. Um... Uh, we're going to restart this again. Maybe one more restart out of this. Back to main menu, new game. Attacking the enemy. Yes. Finland, yes. Somehow I'm butchering this. Okay. Yes. Reconnaissance, yes. Come up here. Um. Now we're looking for here. There we go. And here we want to click that. And we're going to drag you all the way down to here. Cool. And then we will end the turn. Let's make sure we get there. End the turn. Right there we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, first you notice double click. Preparing, okay, double click, preparing to attack. Bottom of the log, drive message, double click message to read it. Ah, oh, here we are. Okay. Um, White's Armored Train. The sole armored train made by the Finnish Whites was named Karjalan pa Pelastaya, the savior of Karelia. It operated in the region of the same name and had a single artillery wagon powered by lightly armored, lightly armored locomotive. Too bad IKB isn't here. He's missing an armored train. Its sole weapon was a 76mm mountain gun. To ensure close defense, the crew had to use guns or pistol fire from holes made through the armored plates of the wagon. Despite this, the train had some success. In its presence on the front was great morale booster for the Nationalist soldier. Okay, cool. So we got to see that. Now, how do we get back to the tutorial thingy now? Um... Oh boy, that's just what, oh, uh, we, we need the tutorial bit back up here. Uh, well guys, you know, I think we're going to quit. I'm going to just continue this probably on my own sometime. Um, why not surrender to the dictatorship? I don't know. 100 arguments. Okay. Well, the friend, duty of republic and you American. No, the Fran Re Res Publica starts um, 
Ooh, well, before Rome, I mean, um, Plato and Aristotle definitely used the term republic. Hell, um, Plato writes a book called The Republic. So yeah, it certainly wasn't an American idea. They were just trying to copy what they saw the best elements of. Oh, there's, yeah, there were ones, some of the first ones starting to look at it in the modern sense. But they were just looking at going back to, well, what was good about Rome? Let's try to take the good parts of Rome, um, constitution, if you will. And so, yeah, that's what they did. Okay, well, all of you people who suffered this far through it on YouTube, thanks so much. If you've suffered this far and still like it here, please hit the subscribe button. Tell a friend about you watching people painfully learning the game Suffering is Fun. Yes, for the people watching. And so um, I think there's enough interest um, for once I learn how to play this to try to play some Russian Civil War might might be of interest to get me talking about killing communists that kind of thing so um and um if you're watching this later what do you think about the idea of live streams on fridays i don't know if they'll be how long whether it's like this is almost three hours or four hours or just two hours if you guys want to come and hang out with me while i play different strategy games Thanks so much, everyone. See you next time. Okay, Lum, Harry, anybody else still around? Thanks so much. I think I'm going to play some, after break, I'm going to play some more Thunder, still grinding up the um, the event. I don't know if anybody of you want to play. Not pushing, because Lum probably needs his beauty sleep. But, um see any of you maybe in a short while um there